Hey guys, welcome back to the Smitty and D Show. Of course, I am Tony D. And in the studio, guys, we've got a business guru in the house. You guys, he's a best-selling author, coach, speaker. Welcome to the studio, Dave the Business Bully. <laughs> Thank you so hey, much Dave. for having me. Hey, Tony. How are you? Absolutely awesome. I see that you are a little lighter from the last time I seen you. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you. You did this. I'm trying. So how much weight have you lost so far? 312 pounds. Jesus. Can y'all stop saying that? I feel like Jeez. Don Cheadle on Kevin Hart show. Everybody <laughs> I'm goes, sorry. Damn. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's a lot of weight to lose. Yeah. Okay. It's well, like half the people in this room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 So how do you feel? I feel like uh, in shape people have been holding holding out on me. Like I feel like I got superpowers. Yeah. Like, to just, I mean, simple things like running up the steps and not needing an oxygen tank is really good. And you know, like seeing parts of my body I've never seen when I look down, absolutely phenomenal. So it's it's been great. Well, okay. Absolutely. We're gonna leave it right there. Yes. All right. So. Dave the business bully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel like talking about a little bit of business and why people are screwing up? Yes. All right. I'd love to. All right. First question I got for you. All right. Let's go. You ready? I'm ready. Why are black businesses failing? Who? Or big black, I mean, businesses in general. Why do businesses fail? Well, um, I, I'm black first, so let's talk about black people first. There you go. Um, we believe the myth of business. What's the myth? Oh, well. If you build it, they will come. I'm just, I'm just gonna put it out there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna act like it's 1983 and I'm gonna use word of mouth marketing because that just works so well all the time. It's so predictable to my bottom line. And why should I bother with bookkeeping or attorneys or accountants? No, no, we don't need none of that. We'll figure it out as we go. Mm. And then we wonder why we don't follow up. We wonder why we don't have um, enough money. We wonder why we have more month at the end of the money. We wonder why we have to lay off employees. We wonder why our families are saying, why don't you go back to that good job you left? Both because you listen to the people who got fake teeth telling you to jump and everything's been handed to them. So, um, Not fake teeth. Yeah, listen, I said what I said. <laughs> but a, a, lot, a lot of what's happening comes down to this myth, fairy tale, Disney version, Shark Tank, profit type of vibe of entrepreneurship everybody's trying to get to the bag but nobody wants to get to the foundation because the foundation is not sexy mm. well there you have it do you think black people are built for business of course we are how so um how far back do you want to go let's go in Africa, we did everything. We created medicine. And I mean, even when you look at what we did for Europe, mm -hmm. when you talk about pulling white folks out of the dark ages, I mean, folks were sleeping with their animals. We built them pens and stables and things of that nature. To this day, culturally in our DNA, we have a thing about, you know, kissing your dog in the mouth and not sleeping with your pets, unless you're one of those weird pet ladies. Like everything we do, we make better, mm. you know? we literally won the Revolutionary War, and I'm not talking about Crispus Attic's epic sacrifice, I'm talking about the African mothers who taught General Washington how to heal wounds with salves and herbs and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we, we've we invented everything that matters in this world and we continue to innovate. It's just that we're busy innovating and not maximizing on the actual profitability. Mm -hmm. So what should we be doing as, as far as business owners? Stop performing, start managing. What do you mean by stop performing? Okay, so everybody wants to look good for people they've never met. Everybody wants to get on the gram and pose and you know buy red bottom shoes, but they haven't taken care of their bottom line. They don't have uh, steady marketing offers, things of that nature. We have to stop showing off before we actually run the race. Mm. You know, that's like, it's hard to explain to people that what we're doing, by and large, and I don't want the not all police to come for me, it, it's performative. Mm -hmm. We gotta stop worrying about our image and our brand when we haven't built a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're capable of building the Taj Mahal if you're building it on quicksand. We gotta stop performing. Mm -hmm. We've gotta start with the stuff that nobody can see. Mm. When you look at a tree, simple. When you look at a tree, the first thing a tree does is it digs roots mm -hmm. so deep 
that you just can't knock it down. That's why even if you chop down a tree, the stump is there. They have to have a stump removal, and the stump removal costs more than cutting the tree down mm. because it's buried that deep. Mm. We have to bury our foundation so deep that whatever we build upon it will, will stand mm. for longer than 18 and a half months, mm. which is where most of us are when it comes to our businesses. Hmm. Duly noted. Got it. Hmm. So we've got younger generations mm -hmm. that are starting businesses. Sure. Any words for them? Stop listening to your parents. Why? We were just talking um, before we started this show about iPhones. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen the first iPhone, it looks nothing like an iPhone 14 or 15. I don't know which one we're up to. Yeah. They're dropping them every week it's like 15. Prince albums. Yeah. So um, they are both iPhones, but one was made for a particular time. Mm -hmm. You can't even update it. It's beyond that. So, you know, my mom being a baby boomer and an entrepreneur, she had certain things that she knew mm -hmm. that worked for her that just don't work anymore. It's not the 80s. And so you should take what they say with a grain of salt, but you need to find somebody who is doing mm -hmm. what it is that you're trying to do, who has already learned the lessons and taken the bumps and the bruises like they're Teddy P, and learn from them. Because a lot of times we are built based upon our fears. And so we'll tell our children, hey, don't do that because if you do that, then this can happen and you have all these things to fall back on. Everybody I know who started a business who has something to fall back on fell back and didn't get up. Mm. So that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is stop doing everything by committee. What do you mean by that? When you are doing something, when God gives you a vision, he gives it to you. He didn't give it to your friends. He didn't give it to your homeboys. You know, he didn't give it to uh, your friends in your group chat or your fantasy football friends. He gave it to you for a specific reason. Trust in that. We don't trust that still silent voice inside of us. And I think that's a mistake. I think once you've got it really fleshed out, then you want to put it up against your board. You should have people who you can actually trust, who are in that same type of vein, who understand what it is that you're going through. But just telling everybody, hey, I'm going to start this thing. Everybody's going to tell you everything that's wrong with it. Everybody's going to start poking holes in your business. And what happens is that low self-esteem that you've been wrestled with, that has been indoctrinated in you, it's going to rear its ugly head and it's going to come up to your surface and it's going to burn you like acid reflux. So um, be very careful who you share your dream with because God gave it to you for a reason. Hmm. Now, I'm sure you've launched several businesses. Yeah, a couple. Have you ever failed at one of your businesses? <laughs> I'm not done. What? <laughs> and how did you handle it? Wow. I failed a bunch of times. Uh, Why? My, Why do you think you failed? I'm never wrong. I'm always early. <laughs> Explain. So, um, in 1999, a um, good buddy of mine says, you know, you're, you're sending these digital files that I was doing a lot of production and commercials and radio. And right around the turn of the century, we were still using reel-to-reel -reel tapes to send off commercials across the Point, country. I remember those I days. still have, if you look closely at my fingers, you'll see the cuts from the razor blades from me using from splicing slices, tape. slices, yeah. <laughs> I was just telling right? somebody that. The, and, my producer, yeah. yeah. My, 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 my kids at uh, Temple, when I talk about that, they're like, you mean you had to cut yourself? No, I didn't, but it's just a hazard. So I said, we could save a lot of time and a lot of money on the FedEx bill if I could just send these things out MP3. So I created this company, built this website called mp3imaging.com. And I got a couple of stations, they were into it, but it crashed and burned inside of three months. Mm. Because everybody was still reeling from a little thing called Y2K. And they thought that anything that had an attachment, because most people weren't sending emails with attachments in 1999, early 2000. They thought it was a virus because that's all that was permeated through the news. And I failed miserably. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with that. Uh, 2003, I had a business called hitmeonahip.com, which was really focused on two-way paging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that one, I didn't anticipate uh, the fact that the phone was going to become the thing that was gonna envelop you know, texting, paging, gaming, all of those things. So I had a whole bunch of people endorsing it. If you came to the radio station, you won't give hitmeonahit.com a shot. I don't care who you were. Mm. And it worked until all of a sudden the two-way went dead. Mm. It happens. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the concept was good. It was just too early, too late, not the right time. People don't get it. See, the thing about having a vision is that God gives it to you so that you're ahead of the curve. 
And sometimes you got to let it develop before you push it out. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to figure out. So that's when you have to really start doing your research and digging deep into your discernment. But yeah, I failed. Anybody who tells you they haven't failed is is lying. Mm. Failing is how you learn. You learn nothing from winning. Every time I've won, that I, I, I learned nothing. Every time I lost, I learned something. When I was washing up in that gas station sink after being homeless, oh yeah, I learned something. When were you homeless? Who? <laughs> and why were you homeless? Wow. Um, when I was still doing radio, mm-hmm. um, I ran into a situation where the person I was working with had ADHD bipolar, completely diagnosed mm-hmm. like by professionals. And he refused to take his medicine. As a result, he would lash out at people. And you know, I have a mama and a daddy, and I- I'm not gonna just let you lash out on me, physically threaten me, those types of things. And um, we got into it one day and I was at Hands with my cousin. And I got a call from my boss and he says, listen, I gotta let you go. I said, for what? He said, I don't know, but you know who? And I was called Radio Tupac because I would I would get fired or get shot. Then I would go across the street and it'd be first off, fuck your bitch in the click, you clean less. You know, mm-hmm. I, I would just start shooting at at the station I just left that and got ratings because now I know their playbook because I was just there. So everybody who was with me thought I was OK because I'm Radio Tupac. But people forget Tupac died. Mm -hmm. Last time he got shot. Mm -hmm. My death was being homeless because everybody thought that I was cool. And then the ones who didn't think I was cool were told if they helped me, if they reached out to me, that would be the end of their career. So um, what do you do when you're not when from the time you were nine years old to the time that you are 27? All you did was radio, television film Mm -hmm. Mm stand-up you see that on a resume your hiring manager you're like this guy's just sitting here to do something until Hollywood comes calling again Mm -hmm. so I wound up um, losing absolutely everything except for my truck and I washed up every day in a quick trip on 316 carrier in Arlington Texas how long were you homeless for it's a real long four and a half months did anybody know Um, hmm. lessons Um, I learned real quickly that my ego couldn't handle people realizing I had failed like that. So I didn't tell anybody. And then one day my brother called me and he was like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm at work. I had found some stupid job. And he said, well, where are you living now? No, I, I couldn't lie to my brother. I could never lie to my brother. Mm. And I said, I'm in my car. He said, Negro, if you don't bring your butt home, get your next paycheck and then bring your butt home. Mm. And that was pretty much that. Mm. Yeah. So, going from homelessness mm-hmm. to then having a family, mm. what was that transition like? <laughs> it's a lot of stops on the way. Um, How many stops? What did you What did you do between? Wow, gosh, what did I do? So much. Like a lot of it's a blur. Mm-hmm. You know, like when you go through a certain level of trauma, some of it you just black out. Oh yeah. You know, um, what I can tell you is there were a lot of um, stops, false starts, things of that nature. Um, in that time, while I was living in my brother's garage, I became the first director of social media for a Fortune 500 company. So I'm the first guy to do all that social media marketing stuff and get a check from a corporation to what do company? so. Um, it was what you now call iHeart. Oh, yeah. Clear Channel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that that was an interesting run. It was my last run. And after that, I retired. Hmm. Um, and, you know, I reconnected with... Um, the woman who would be my wife, who, you know, the day I met her, I was like, yeah, that's it. Like, I knew. Wow. I always knew. So, you know, I went living in 19 states. She went running, doing what she did. And then, you know, we found each other at the right time. And, Mm. you know, God is good. How does family interfere or help your business or anyone's business? Mm -hmm. Depends on the family. Meaning your family will either exalt you into greatness or they will tear you asunder Mm. it's the most important business decision i've ever made it's the most important business decision anybody will ever make um i didn't really get successful until i had somebody else to work for explain um fast forward to like 2016 Mm -hmm. my my oldest says to me she says daddy um 
I'll, um, I, I decided I want to go to college. I said, all right, cool. So Temple University, just like dear old dad. Mm-hmm. She said, no, nah, I got to go to Howard. I said, whoa, whoa, hey, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I turned in the I turned, hold on, anime, now, now, now. Hold on, no, no, wait now. Hold, wait, wait, wait. Hey, and Howard. I said, listen, out-of-state tuition. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a whole lot of connections at Howard. Mm-hmm. This is something you've never experienced, you know. And she says to me something she never said. She said, Daddy, I feel like if I don't go to Howard, I'm going to die. And she hit me with the Denzel glory tear. And like, she's not, like, if you know her, you know that she's really subdued. She's not melodramatic. And when Mm -hmm. she did that, I was like, I got to find a way to make this work. Mm -hmm. And I went into overdrive. You know, I I built a new website. I was making 100 phone calls a day. Um, I had probably my first $100,000 month at the end of her first semester. So I paid that tuition cash and I paid her entire bill, $151,363.36 in cash. Mm -hmm. I had somebody to work for. Got it. Right, when it was me, I didn't mind being homeless. I could could deal with that. My my pride could deal with that. My family doesn't know what that is. Mm. They'll never know what that is. When you have something or someone to work for, you move differently. You think about things differently. Yes, you you watch what you say mm-hmm. and how you say it. It's not that you're compromising. It's just that you have other people to care for. Mm. <sighs> wow. How are you able to balance family and business? What does that look like There's for no you? such thing. Why you say that? See, when we use these marketing terms like work-life balance, mm-hmm. that would technically mean that you would have to play just as much as you work. Mm-hmm. That's impossible for anybody successful. So what you want to do is counterbalance. In other words, you want to make sure that the time you're spending with your family is so dense, so deep, so rich that when you have to go do a press tour, you know, 600 miles away from home and you've got three or four days away from the baby and, you know, the wife needs this. And it, it, it doesn't really affect them that way because they just had all of this. And then when you get back, you're right back to it. Mm-hmm. But I don't play as much as I work. And anybody who tells you they have balance is lying. Everyone I know. Everyone I know. You can name any entrepreneur that I've ever associated with who's successful in the millions, if not billions, and all of them will do something like, I'm taking the month of August off, and that's when I'm with my family. Mm -hmm. But there's no such thing as balance in the traditional sense of the word. But it's about not the quantity of time, but it's the quality of time. Mm -hmm. Then you got to start investing in your business to the level where you buy your time back. Because especially, um, and I say this with love, please don't come for me in the comments, 96% of my uh, clients are black women. So I'm doing this from an empirical data standpoint. (sighs) You don't get points for putting on a cape nobody asks you to put on. You don't have to be the woman who puts who picks up the phone and calls everybody. You don't have to schedule every single meeting yourself. You don't have to send out every single email. You don't have to be Debbie do it all or Patty Perfection. There are people who can do that for you so that you get your time, your sanity, and your edges back. And nobody wants to have edges. that conversation. Yeah, I, I said it because literally I've seen I've seen sisters like pull at their edges in frustration because they're doing too much. Mm-hmm. And my personal favorite is I don't trust just anybody. This is my baby. No, it's not. It's your business. It's not your baby. So you've got to start changing the mentality and finding things that are absolutely essential for you to do and everything else you outsource. Because you want peace, not balance. You want success, not a superhero cape, Hmm. period. I hear that. Let's talk about black men in business. Sure. Had a guest on, Pamela Booker, we talked about why women, black women are, I guess they're promoted so much into, in black businesses. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it for black men to own businesses now? (laughs) What are some of their challenges? What are they facing? (sighs) <sighs> the biggest challenges that black men are facing, number one, is themselves. Let's just start the bidding at that, right? The biggest problems I've had as clients are usually my brothers because it's hard unless you are military trained 
or some type of former police officer or you've had a daddy in your life, which a lot of uh, my brothers have not had the honor, privilege of having, you're not used to somebody telling you that you have areas in which you need improvement. Mm. That's a hard pill to swallow when the rest of the world is already telling you you're big, you're scary, you're violent, your skin is a weapon, right? So it's hard for you in this thing that is your own Mm -hmm. to be coached because no one's ever told you how to be coachable. Mm -hmm. And then if you've grown up without a daddy in your your house, then you nine times out of 10 have become a son husband to your mama. What? Okay. What is a son husband? (laughs) A son husband is um, the replacement for all of the bad choices mommy may have made. And so she tries to fix everything in the son and the son becomes the man of the house. That's a hell of a responsibility for a 10 year old. Yeah, He ain't built for that. Does he know how to fire a weapon? Like, like, really think about how sick that is to put. That's abuse, mm-hmm. and we don't talk about it because no, it's don't. so normalized in our culture. Name another culture where that happens. At at the clip, it happens for us. So, when you ask me about how black men are are having issues in business, building businesses, maintaining businesses, being promoted in corporate America, it's because the foundation is quicksand. That's. The main part of it, the, the, the second thing is, it makes a lot more sense to, to promote somebody who's been told their whole life that you can do everything a boy can. You're better, you're stronger, you're faster. All the opportunities, 80% of the scholarships that ever get put out are put out towards black women. Mm-hmm. The scholarships that go for black men, you either um, play an instrument. Let's start with the, uh, the the weird ones. You play an instrument. You're a chess grandmaster. You may have been on the golf team, or you run, kick, or throw a ball. That that's pretty much it. But academics, you know, things that fire off and promote creativity, those are usually reserved for our women, mm-hmm. and that's by design. The mm-hmm. Majority of the C-suite, black women. Because here's what happens: if you know that if you get this degree and then you add that degree and then another degree, well, now you got more degrees than a mason. Then what winds up happening is you start believing that you are your accomplishments. You are your degree. You are all of these things. So now what you have done is eliminated the need in your mind because of the propaganda you've been fed and the tradition that has been passed down to you that a man is only here for your entertainment and your pleasure. Well, whew, heavy, 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 heavy. You've coached lots of businesses, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have an idea of what a successful business owner looks like. Sure. Can you give us an idea? A successful- You know they're gonna succeed. You're like, nope, they got it. Yeah. Um, hmm. Tony, I wanna make sure I answer this as concisely as humanly possible. A successful business leader I can tell within five minutes Mm. because they're not the loudest one in the room. Mm -hmm. They're asking questions and they're not telling me their resume. Mm. They want to learn something, they wanna be better, and they want to have an impact beyond themselves. The people who are usually not successful are those who, number one, and this is a pet peeve of mine, they dismiss their last name. Okay, let me try it a different way. Wells Fargo. I don't know that world. <laughs> I'm always going no. by my last name. Yes, exception, <laughs> exceptions. Tony never disproved the rule. Wells Fargo is a last name. Walton is a last name. Mm-hmm. Like there are all of these companies that are last names, mm-hmm. right? When you dis, when you disassociate yourself from your last name, I'm I'm Michelle Lene. M- Michelle Lene, what? Who are you playing for? Mm. That tells me you're only playing for you. And if you're only playing for you, you have a selfish mentality nine times out of ten. Or you really hate your last name, and even if that's the case, 
Do what other people do. Take $35, go to the courthouse, and make a last name worth having that you're not embarrassed by. Hmm. That That's the thing. You have got to work for a legacy. If you work for you, then it starts and stops with you. When you die, so goes the thing. That's a problem. The other thing I know when I can see that somebody is going to be successful is they don't flinch when I tell them absolutely everything about their business, about their customer service, about their process, about their systems or lack thereof, that is downright but ugly. Mm. They're like, oh, cool. I'm taking copious notes right now. Cool. <laughs> oh, my, my, my email sucked, Dave? Damn, I didn't know that. <laughs> I should do copy. Okay, cool, got that. Because when you stop learning, you should be dead. Mm-hmm. You have absolutely no no purpose to serve humanity. Mm-hmm. You should be in a constant state of learning. Entrepreneurship is the ultimate college. It teaches you more about yourself, Whew. how you relate to people, Lord. how you contribute to society, mm. and what you're absolutely made of. I feel like you're preaching. Mm. I've been through that school of hard knocks. A few yes. of us in this room has. Listen. It's been it's been a tough one. <laughs> feel like I'm in a twenty third grade. <laughs> Lord, Mm. are there any resources, books, or anything that you could suggest to entrepreneurs? Oh, wow. Yeah, there's there's so many. Um, The first thing that I would say is if you want to learn something, right, Google has a bunch of certifications you can get because everybody and their mother's afraid of ads, Mm -hmm. right? But at some point, you're going to run out of the whole organic thing. So I think you should probably go um, to Google and get a Google ad certification. I think that's extremely important. I feel like you should be reading Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. I feel like you should um, read everything by Robert Kiyosaki, Mm. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The uh, the Capitalist Manifesto, phenomenal book. Uh, I feel like Damon John's The Power of Broke is is an excellent read. Hmm. Get the audio book because Sway reads it. It's phenomenal. Um, I love Sway. I, I, I like Sway a lot. Mm-hmm. Good dude. Um, I also think that you don't have to sit around and think so hard and try to figure everything out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you need to start spending some time on what it means to... Um, outsourced in a real way so four hour work week uh great book if you've never read it okay um so yeah those are my top recommendations barring any books that i've written hmm. Hmm. fascinating fascinating hmm. how are you maintaining everything now how do you balance what does your life look like oh, wow. who's in your world who's helping you oh god i have an amazing team of people mm-hmm. uh, my executive team is phenomenal um, I have um, I have a therapist on my team for my clients because this um, it's a mind fuck. The only way I can put it, entrepreneurship. If you're doing it right and you're on this path, it is a mind fuck because you go through these huge successes. You go through. Um, hashtags and retweets you go through the moment where you go viral viral. and then all of a sudden the next video does 200 views and you're like what the but the last one just did five million how did how how did did i get here (laughs) my ass ain't supposed to be here so i have a therapist on staff who is there to help people deal with the mindset you need to have Mm -hmm. and how many shifts you need to make throughout the process i have somebody on my team who is the organizer. I'm a visionary, I'm not an organizer. I'm not gonna sit up here and lie to you. I'm about as organized as a wet dream with no payoff. Just just let it sink in, it'll hit you in three seconds. So, uh, I have- than three seconds. Yeah, it's okay, it happens. Um, I have somebody who does all of the scheduling. I have somebody that just handles email and I have somebody that focuses on the digital part of business because whether you like it or not I don't care if you're selling hot dogs on the corner Mm. or you are selling cosmetics beauty lines whatever if you're in entrepreneurship in this day and age you are a content creator first and foremost and if you're not you're going to get destroyed yeah so you have to have those things and then I have a a group of people who um, get paid a lot of money to handle the financial side of things 
um, to handle the legal side of things um, up to and including a trademark attorney mm -hmm. because a lot of us will slap something on a t-shirt and then somebody will steal it trademark it and then tell you cease and desist mm -hmm. that's what I mean when I say the, the, you got to do the unsexy stuff mm -hmm. first so um, those are the people that are helping me I have a wife who listens to me rant and rave about what next idea I have one day I woke up in the middle of the night and I'm like Janae she's like what Dave what is it I said honey I got an idea she's like what is it I was like bully con we're going to do a conference every year and I'm going to set them straight and I'm going to bring in real people and we're going to actually do work and it's not going to be beach balls and making it rain and twerking and, 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 and the black IP. We're not doing any of that. We're going to just get down to brass tacks and we're going to love on each other and it's going to be healthy and it's not going to be toxic. And she was like, yeah, you're going to do that. Good night, babe. <laughs> and that's just what it was. And, and, and at that point, that's all I needed. I just needed her to say, I can do it. Because she'll also tell me if it's, you know, insane. It's whack. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You need that. You need checks and balances. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are going unchecked. Yeah. You know, so um, aside from that, I, I got my two star players, my daughters. Yeah. My daughters are, oh, God, everything. My youngest is going to take over the business. My oldest is more creative. My youngest uh, sat in when I was having a Zoom meeting with my clients. And she says, Dad, what are you doing? I said, I'm talking to my people. That's what I call them because she doesn't, she couldn't say clients at the time. She said, no, Daddy, move over. These are my people. She says, hi, I'm Devlin Anderson. I'm the new business bully. When Daddy dies, this is all mine. So what do we got? <laughs> and I was like, yo. <laughs> so listen, man, I, I got to make sure I keep the ship for them. I love it. Is there any information, anything off the top of your head that mm -hmm. you wasn't asked that you want to share? Mm. You think we absolutely are. People need to know if you're on a business or maybe family, life, love, relationships. I know you can cover it all. Yeah. What do you want I'll to do? I'll do my best. 90% um, of these gurus are lying to you. Somebody's got to say it. You're not getting 4,000% returns if you just invest in this crypto magical thing that they pulled out of their ass coin. Um, these people who are telling you that all you got to do is just work out and buy these particular brand of yoga pants and this, that, and the third when you've gotten a BBL, a tummy tuck, a facelift, an eyebrow lift, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But the, the, the tea that is making you, um, I don't know, dehydrated is the thing that's getting you to weight loss. There is no magic bullet. There is no quick fix. They only make money off of you they've never built anything that they can show for you can throw me in any city and I, I can point you to somebody who's gotten at least six figures from what I've taught them most of them can't say that they never point to their clients they always point to look at me look at my fancy $35,000 watch look at my red bottom shoes look how cute I am look who I'm on the plane with yeah, you bought that plane. Not to mention if you spend, I don't know, $7,000, you can go ahead and get yourself a private jet membership from Costco, but nobody wants to have that conversation <laughs> either. Stop following people because they look good. Start paying attention to their results, not their sales pitch. Mm. That's it. I think that's the most important thing because they're getting a lot of bad information because they just want to be sexy. They just want to win right now. And there's no such thing as winning right now. You got to set the board up. You got to play the game. You got to lose a few times. Then you become a grandmaster. So way to do it. Hey, you might want to take some more drinks because it's time for random questions. Ba -ba 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 -ba! I am going to buy you people an air horn. You don't need it. <laughs> we are the air horn. Clearly. You hear that? <laughs> All right, sir. Yes, ma'am. How much does ego play into what you do? Oh, man, let me tell you something. I'm a narcissist. Okay. Okay? There's a difference between having a high opinion of yourself, which you should have at all times, versus narcissistic personality disorder, mm -hmm. which is a psychological condition. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. I believe in me. Hmm. Right? I believe in me when everybody says... I'm crazy for saying, hey, Toys R Us is going to close in three years and then in two and a half it closes. Mm -hmm. I believe in me because if I don't believe in me, how is anybody going to follow me? How is anybody going to buy into what I'm saying if I don't believe it? I, I think it's extremely important to have a healthy ego that is checked with people who absolutely love you, who cannot 
necessarily benefit from you outside of the love that you provide for them, mm. right? You need people in your life who want to see you doing good. Like, hey, dog, don't do that. Don't do that. You say it like this. You should still say what the thing you're going to say. But say it in a way mm -hmm. that, you know, like kills it with a fly swatter, not with a predator drone. I've been a predator drone kind of guy. I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to the fly swatter. Okay. I love that answer. Mm -hmm. Going to food. What's your favorite food or dish? Wow. You've lost a lot of weight, sir. <laughs> I feel like you're an expert. Yeah, listen, I, if, if, if there's a town I can tell you where to eat. Um, my favorite food, mm. depends on the day, but if I had to pick one thing, oh God, this is going to sound so stereotypically Negro of me. It's okay. Well done, all flat lemon pepper wings. What? Yes. Listen, they've got this thing called ranch wings. I know you... It's at the A-Town Wings. I don't know if you've been there. I have not. It is amazing. Yes. And I'm telling you, I've gone to a lot of places. They do not know what I'm talking about. But it's better than lemon pepper. How long are you here for? Uh, I'm here till tomorrow morning. Thank you. Oh, and they close at 10. Hey, next do. time you come, yeah. I'll have some lemon pepper wings. I'm telling you. I, I want the ranch wings. You just hype I'm them sorry, up. ranch wings. Yeah, I, everybody who comes to town, I bring them over there. Ranch wings. And they're all like, what is this? It's tangy. Mm. It's got a crust. I don't even know what that stuff is, but it's amazing. That's it's awesome. all flavor. Yes. Okay. All right. How important is your image, wow. your image to your business? <laughs> um, I'm reminded of a Houston preacher named Michael Jones who said, "Back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me." Um, one of my one of my best friends um, was also a big guy, and he lost a lot of weight. And you know, Miss David Banner, and he told me something. He said, "Taz, my my friends call me Taz." He said, "Taz, I'm not saying I wasn't selling." But when I lost this weight, took my shirt off, I sold a lot more. <laughs> so the truth of the matter is, um, I didn't do this for image. I, d I did this because I promised my wife forever. Mm. And I'll be damned if she, you know, winds up spending my brain trust and the funds that I've made on the pool boy or, you know, the, the personal trainer. Seriously, though, um, I want to be here to make sure that my youngest daughter's daughter will have me dancing at her wedding. I want to live wow. to enjoy the fruits of my labor. And too many of us, you know, blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no. Um, sugar. Yeah, but I, I think image is important because I didn't start talking about fitness until I got under 250. What is your absolute favorite book? The Bible. Why? Um, because most people are teaching it wrong and most people are reading it wrong. Gotcha. Um, I just, the thing of it is, my favorite verse is Matthew 5.15, which says, and I'm paraphrasing, don't hide your light under a bushel, but make it plain for, in order to exalt, exalt and exemplify God, which is where this little light of mine comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like when you dull your light and diminish yourself for other people, you're doing God a disservice because God put those gifts in you mm. in order to shine so that you can say, damn, look what God did in that person's life. Mm. You know, my, my, my story starts in the Richard Allen Projects of Philadelphia. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not. I'm not supposed to be in Forbes or Entrepreneur Magazine. I'm not supposed to be. I went to the worst high school in, in America. It was so bad they called Joe Clark, like from Lean On Me, Joe Clark. He was like, I can't help y'all. I can't help y'all. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be a statistic. So yeah, like I think the Bible is important because it teaches you how to be and how to be despite the odds. Everybody in the Bible who is considered a hero or a prophet is an overcomer first. You want to know how to overcome? Read the Bible. Mm. How do you feel about reality TV? I hate it. Why? It destroys the image of black women in America. As the black woman goes, so goes black society. So let's review. You would be hard pressed to, to find a show where you actually see black women who are actual entrepreneurs, not some fun little boutique in the mall, not a kiosk, not I've got an eyelash line, but actual entrepreneurs. You know what you do see, though? A bunch of women who are throwing drinks at each other, talking bad about each other, talking about each other, smiling in each other's faces, backstabbing, and then talking about how this baby daddy loves me more than he loves you and I'm still sleeping with him even though he's with me and not with you. Like It becomes a whole thing, and then that image goes out into the world. So then you wonder why so many 
black women are quote unquote not protected, not respected, mm. treated like the animals. You you wonder why when you go to a hospital, they say, oh, she don't need anesthesia because you're strong and independent because that's the image that's out there. You're loud, you're boisterous, you're weave wig wearing, you got to snuffle up, it gets eyebrows out to here, you got a BBL that's killing you and your thighs don't match. And then let's not get started on what they do to black men. They're either completely emasculated or there's some type of um, thug Tupac caricature that completely eliminates the ability to express our intelligence, our creativity, and our need to not only protect, provide, but actually nurture a woman in a place where she can feel safe to be who she is. Mm. And then on top of that, you can't point to a reality show that does not have somebody who does not look like us um, at the helm up to including the love and hip hop ones because everybody focuses on how bad Mona Scott is but nobody says anything about Jim Ackerman. Social me media is making us less social. Talk mm. about it. The thing about social media is that it's designed to bring us together but it's pulling us apart because we're putting on the best representation of ourselves. We're putting on a filter and an angle and an angle. Mm -hmm. meaning we using it from an aesthetic uh, point of view and we're also using it from whatever we're trying to hustle and pitch. Mm -hmm. We're not being who we are because we're so afraid if we show people who we are that they won't like us and we're so busy wanting everybody to like us. I don't care if you like me or not. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm listen, I'm not here to bring a shield but a sword. Mm -hmm. My favorite person said that and I stand by that. We have to take a hard look at what's being poured into us and what we're using. I'll put it another way. It is a fact. You can Google this when you have nothing better to do. The Chinese government runs TikTok. And there's two TikToks. There's TikTok and then there's Dayen. Dayen is the TikTok that they have in China. And you can only be on it for 40 minutes a day. You can... Um, you can't be on it overnight, like it shuts down after the sun goes off, right? Then the algorithm is set to show you beauty and achievement and education and excellence. Our algorithm is showing us stupid human tricks and bald-headed hoe shit and twerking and, you know, putting um, firecrackers up your behind. It's true, it's true. I mean, you can Google this, you don't have to like me, but the facts are the facts. So if there's an agenda, what does that say about who we are? That they are so afraid that if we focused on beauty mm. and achievement and education and growth, what we could be. I don't have to drop a bomb on you to obliterate you. I just got you, get you focused on wrong things, on stupid things, on things that do not produce money, beauty, integrity, intelligence, legacy. So social media is the devil. And sometimes you have to use the devil in order to get things done, and then other times you need to run away from it. Whew. Not quite switching gears. Sure. But what trend do you absolutely want to see go away? Or a set of trends mm. that you want to see go away? Bottle wars. Explain. So there's this thing now where you see Negroes in the club, and they'll take expensive bottles of liquor that they could have got at the liquor store for $30, but they paid $400 a bottle, and they're standing there, do a dance on the floor in the round and they pour the liquor out on the floor and I'm not talking about a little bit for the homies I'm talking about all of it just to say that they can waste this money mm. do you know how much we could get done with the amount of money they're wasting in the clubs that they do not own yeah I, I need that to go away I'm going to need us all and when I say all, I mean all, to certain and varying degrees, but all of us are addicted to the newest designer drug out there. And nobody wants to cop to it, Tony Neal. What is it? It's clout. Clout is the new crack. Explain, sir. Um, <laughs> every time you get a like, mm. a share, a retweet, yes. a post, somebody famous following you, mm -hmm. you stick your chest out and you're feeling good because the same dopamine receptors that happen when you hit that crack yep. fire off mm -hmm. in your brain when you see that click, that like, that share mm. because you have nothing in here mm. that drives you. I'm still Dave Anderson without the business. I'm still Dave Anderson without the radio. I'm still Dave Anderson. If nobody else ever interviews me again, mm. I am still me. I still have me. And that's what I learned washing up in that gas station when I was homeless. I still have me. Wow. And I'm enough. Mm. 
Mm. It doesn't matter what you think of me. How do I view myself when I'm in that mirror? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and that's the thing that the clout, the clout thing, we need clout rehab in the worst way oh. right now. Um, lastly, um, Kardashian worship needs to stop. Here's what I mean by that. You, 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 I hear people who look like me say, oh, well, the Kardashians are brilliant businesswomen and blah, blah, blah. No, Kris Jenner is a hell of a PR person. Can't take it from her. But if you're going to credit things like Good American and Skims, you need to talk about a black woman named Emma Greed who created those things. So stop acting like the Kardashians are the end-all, be-all. They are just clout chasers mm. who have made their limits and made their living and made their bones off of the success of black men, much to those black men's detriment. I'm going to need y'all to get some perspective. Mm. Proverbs 4, 7 says, in all that get and get an understanding. Understand your enemy before you start worshiping them. Ooh. All right. All right. So what lesson mm. do you keep having to learn? Did I say that right? Yes, you said A that right. A lesson that you have to learn over and over. Maybe you haven't gotten it yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to get it before I die, but here it is. There is no final level. Um, you're around my age. Did you ever play Super Mario Brothers on Nintendo? I am a beast, sir. <laughs> okay, all right. So then you would know this. The game starts off very simply, very happy. It's sunshine. Da -da 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 -da. Do, 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 do. Then all of a sudden it gets dark. Do -da 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 -da. Did it, did it, did it. So then Mario goes, he jumps over the thing, he takes the axe, he gets Koopa, and all of a sudden there's this girl. And he's like, oh, he's got the princess. And the woman says, sorry, I'm not the princess. Your princess is in another castle. Mm -hmm. There's always another castle. Ooh. There's always another level. When I was in radio, I said, listen, if I just make 40 grand a year, I'm it. If I can just get in the syndication, I've done it. If I can just get somebody so good that I can produce them to the Hall of Fame. Well, I did that four times. There's always another level. And every time I think I've hit that top of the mountain, there's another mountain to climb. Now, if you were to talk to my wife, my wife would tell you that Dave's problem is he likes to climb the mountain, he'll plant his flag, and he'll say, oh, there's a bigger mountain. And he'll leave his equipment, he'll slide down that mountain, and he'll start climbing another one. There is no final level. The final level is death. Do not get complacent. We have no time to get complacent. I've heard uh, certain gurus say, oh, well, you know, we did this at our particular event. And I'm not knocking that. I feel like black people, we should have fun. We've earned the right to have a little fun. But if you don't have $400 for an emergency, we ain't got time to party. And the majority of us don't. We ain't got time to make it rain. We ain't got time to pop bottles. I need us to have some perspective when it comes to getting ourselves together we are our own responsibilities nobody's coming for us the government's not coming for us joe biden ain't gonna save you kamala ain't gonna save you trump ain't gonna save you you better save yourself and hope that the policies that you vote for help you financially so that you can hire more black people that's the only way we make it but i keep having to learn that there is no final level i have not learned that lesson yet i don't think i'll ever learn that lesson because i thought Boom, married the girl of my dreams. This is it. Children. <laughs> There's always something else. What's next? What's more? That doesn't mean you neglect everything else. It means that you need to be striving for something better than that. Mm. Otherwise, you're not fit to live. And I have not learned that yet. Preach. It's the end. If you're going up to the pearly gates. <laughs> what, what do you hope God say to you? He's going to have a lot to say. The thing of it is, I'm named after a person that did horrible, horrible things. And while I don't think I've done horrible things, I'm sure that I've made some horrible mistakes. I tell my clients, I tell my team, I tell my kids, um, and I'll even tell you this. I'm the bad guy in a lot of people's story. And if you're honest with yourself, you're the bad guy in a lot of people's story too. It's part of the human experience. However, Noah was drunk. Um, David was an adulterer. He had a man killed just so he could smash his wife. But yet, David is looked upon as a man after God's own heart. I feel like redemption is the most important thing. And for every mistake I've ever made, for everything that I've ever 
fallen short on. I've done a lot more good. And I think at the end of the day, if I played my cards right, and God knows I get up every day trying to make sure that I play my cards right, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm. That's all I want. That That's what I'm working for, you know? I, I really want God to be proud of me because I'm not perfect. I ain't never been perfect. I ain't never been picked first for anything. But I get to be yet another one of his phenomenal redemption stories. So when I'm going, that's what I want people to remember, that I did it in spite of my condition. Do you think that you've done good? Oh, yeah. Every time, I, I, I have one client, her name's Anissa, and one Christmas, she takes her husband to a car dealership. And he couldn't figure out why they were there because they had already bought their dream cars. They didn't make money. And... She said, here's the keys. And he was like, what are we doing here? We already have our dream cars. This is wasteful. She says, no, no, baby. This is your car dealership. She bought him the car dealership. Well. Facts. I think I've done some good. When people are able to retire their spouses, right? That's the first thing I did. The, when, when I got my first big check in entrepreneurship, I retired my wife. Because I needed her to be able to nurture our girls in a way that was going to be impactful. Um, when I show people that it's not as hard and as mystifying as a lot of these gurus make it out to be, yeah, I feel like I've done some good. When I keep black people from having to go to a job that they hate, yeah, I think that's good. Other people may say otherwise, but I, I think that that's a pretty phenomenal thing. I love it. Tell people where they can find you. Wow. Um, before I do that, can I just take yes. a second? Um, Bring it. Am, am, am I here? Am yeah, here? that's you. Hi. Um, I need you to support this podcast. I need you to hit that subscribe button. I need you to share it. I need you to like it. I think it's important. Uh, whether you're here to see famous people or people of interest, I think it's critical. I need you to do that because new black media is extremely, extremely fragile, and it needs to be nourished, cherished, and protected. Having said that, I will also say this. It's not supposed to be a best kept secret, so make sure you share. Now, when it comes to me, I'm everywhere at The Business Bully. And if you want any particular type of information, something free that you can sink your teeth into later, go to thebusinessbully.com forward slash without paid ads, and I'll show you how to get to six figures without ever having to do any type of advertising. It's five minutes. There's nothing for sale. There's no pitch. Feel free to take the information that I'm giving you and enjoy it. That's it. I'm just happy to be here and thank you for this. And by the way, the drinks are great. Oh, I'll tell our producer and technical director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they hooked you up. Like Isaac from the Love Boat. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, Dave Anderson. Dave, the business bully. Yes, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having we me. We greatly pleasure. appreciate you. You're very talented. Thank you. And you're very inspirational. Thank I'm doing you. the best I can. Well, guys, if you like more of this type of content, make sure you like, share, comment, and also tell all of your friends and family, you know, just go ahead and just send them the, and, and the text message and, and then have them like it. But yeah, make sure you're doing all of that. And if you want to get in contact with us directly, make sure you reach out to us via email at info at smittyand.com. Again, that's info at smittyand.com. Until next time, guys, take care of one another. Thank you.